Welcome, friends, wherever you are. We're here in the sanctuary at St. Stephen Presbyterian Church in Chatsworth. You are someplace else. But by the grace of God, we can still gather together and we can still worship together. So, friends, open your hearts and let's see what God can do in this time that we share with him and with each other. Let's pray. Lord, you are here. And Lord, I know that you are with each member of this congregation, that you are with each of us wherever we are. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in this time of worship through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives in us as the Holy Spirit and to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. At the sign of triumph, Satan's hoth doth flee. On then Christian soldiers, on to victory. Hell's foundation quiver at the shout of praise. Brothers, lift your voices, loud your anthems raise. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we. One in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward then ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with ours your voices in the triumph song. Glory, Lord, and honor unto Christ the King. This through countless ages, men and angels sing. 
Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Amen. We are in a spiritual battle, and that makes us spiritual soldiers. And the most important weapon, as it were, that we have for the spiritual battle is prayer and our prayer to God. As I thought about what we would pray this week, I looked at different prayers from different sources, but my mind kept going back to the prayer that we prayed last week. And that's what I want to pray with you, followed by our Lord's Prayer. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, Jesus Christ, stay with us us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Jesus Christ, heal us. And now, friends, in a time of silence during this prayer, remember and pray silently for someone who needs prayer, someone who needs it especially in this time. Let's keep praying silently.
Help them, Lord. And now, even if you're home alone, let's pray aloud the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, church. I would like to share a song written by John Rice, and it's called Walk With Me. And according to Jeremiah 29, 11, God still has plans for you. And he's saying today, walk with me, and I'll walk with you. Walk with me, I will walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love shines through. When Moses heard the call of God, he said, Lord, don't send me. But God told Moses, you're the one to set my people free. Oh, walk with me. I will walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love shines through. Now Peter was a most unlikely man to lead the flock. But God, he knew his holiness and he became the rock. Oh, walk with me, I will walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love shines through. Young Mary Magdalene was sure her life could be much more. And by her faith, she dared to let God's love unlock the door. Oh, walk with me, I will walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love shines through. And when you share your faith with me, and work for life made new. The witness of your faithfulness caused me to walk with you. Oh, walk with me. I will walk with you and build the land that God has planned where love shines through. Amen and thank you, John. Thank you. One of the most well-known and comforting of hymns is a hymn called Abide With Me. 
It was written in 1847 by this man here. His name, Henry Francis Light, L-Y-T-E. He was a British and Scottish clergyman. He originally had wanted to be a doctor, but he was not able to study medicine because his health was so bad. His health was a struggle for him throughout his life. He was age 54 and his health was deteriorating. And so he preached one final sermon for his congregation, encouraging them to look to the Lord of life who delivers us from death, not necessarily physical death, but spiritual death. And this was from someone who was facing that physical death himself. And it was only weeks after that sermon, just a few weeks, that Henry Light died at the age of 54. Abide with me. A wonderful hymn that is a prayer, a prayer to God saying, O Lord, abide with me. He patterned it after the episode in Luke 24 where Jesus, the risen Jesus, met two disciples on the road to Emmaus, talked with them, they didn't recognize him. And then at the end of their walk and talk, they turned to the stranger and said, abide with us for the evening is drawing near. Abide with us. And for Henry Light, that became a prayer. Abide with me. Let's sing it together. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide, when other helpers fail and comforts flee. Help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joy grows dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? 
who like thyself my guide and stay can be through clouds and sunshine oh abide with me I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life and death, O oh Lord, abide with me. Amen. What a poignant plea. What a heartfelt prayer. Abide with me. But in the hymn, it is a prayer from someone in deep trouble, someone facing death. It is a prayer to the Lord Jesus and God the Father, pleading, abide with me. Actually, those words are not just words that we can pray to the Lord. They are words that the Lord himself speaks to us. Jesus says to us, abide with me. Those are words he spoke to his disciples in the upper room the last night of his earthly life. And those are the words that we will consider now as we look to the scripture in John chapter 15. Jesus begins like this. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Pause there. I am the true vine, said Jesus, and my father is the vine grower. Israel had been known as the vine, but now Jesus is saying that he is the true vine. And he says that his father, who is the vine grower, removes every branch in me, in Jesus, that bears no fruit. And in fact, every branch that bears fruit, 
he prunes, cuts back to make it bear more fruit. You, he says to the disciples, have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. And that word cleansed is exactly the same as pruned. And then Jesus goes on. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the vine cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Abiding, staying. We know something about that right now. We're under orders to abide in our abode, to stay home. We're to physically distance ourselves from other people. But what Jesus says here is abide, stay, remain in me. There may be physical distancing, but when it comes to the spiritual realm, Jesus is saying, come close to me, abide in me, and let me abide in you. Because unless you are as connected to me as a vine is to the vine branch, You can't bear fruit. Stay close, abide. He repeats, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because Apart from me, you can do nothing. Pause there. Nothing, says Jesus. It's not that you can do a lot of good things. You can be pretty successful apart from me. But what Jesus tells them and tells us is that apart from from me, you can do nothing. Everything that may look so good to the world is nothing. Everything that may impress you about yourself is nothing apart from me. Because whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned because they are not connected to the vine. If you abide in me, Jesus says, and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Wait. Whatever you wish? There's a condition. And the condition is, are you who are asking, are you abiding in Jesus? Are you allowing his words and his teachings to control your thoughts and your desires? If so, ask for whatever you wish, says Jesus, and it will be done for you under those circumstances. And then, 
What's the goal? That we're doing something that will gain glory for us? No, says Jesus. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And it's that bearing of fruit in our lives that glorifies God. And it's that bearing of fruit that is connected by Jesus with becoming his disciples. And he treats discipleship as something not that just is a one-time decision, but it's something that we spend our life becoming. And what he says next, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide, that word again. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My joy. Last week, we talked about the promise of Jesus, a promise of peace, where he says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. I give you my peace. And here, he promises a joy, not joy as the world gives, but his joy, Jesus' joy which is offered to us. And any joy other than Jesus' joy is incomplete. And his goal is that our joy would be complete. And then, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Pause. You would think that Jesus would be saying here at this point, so love me. I am your Lord. I am am offering you joy and peace. I am giving my life for you. So, love me. And yes, we should. But notice that here, Jesus is saying to those who abide in his love, yes, that this is my commandment, that you Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. That's the great and that's the new commandment. Not that there wasn't a commandment in the Hebrew scriptures to love your neighbor, but it is now in the upper room a new commandment Because Jesus is saying, not just that we should love our neighbor, but how we should love our neighbor. And how much we should love our neighbor. And we're to love our neighbor as, says Jesus, I have loved you. And how much is that love that I've loved you with? No one has greater love than this. To lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is about to do that. 
The disciples aren't clear about that. But Jesus is telling them something that they will understand only later after the events of the next day. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Then, you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I've called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. The relationship between us and Jesus, between a servant and a master, yes, that's part of the relationship. But Jesus is saying that it's something even more. In us, he wants not just a servant. In us, he wants a friend. And it's not friendship that we make happen. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Back to the picture of the vine that we began with. To bear fruit, fruit that will last. So that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Jesus offers us the chance to be his friends. Jesus offers us the chance to bear fruit. He offers us love and asks us to love. To love him, yes, and to love each other. To love each other to death. That's what it means to abide in Christ. It means to be connected to Christ so closely that we let him love us. It means to be connected to one another so closely, even during this time of physical separation and social distancing. It means for us to be connected to one another so closely that Christ can love them, others, through us. Blessed be the cords that keep us connected to Christ. Blessed be the ties that bind our hearts in Christian love. Christ's love for us and our love for each other, that is the fruit that will last if we abide in him. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind is like to that above. Be 
before our Father's throne. We pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our one, our comforts, and our cares. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Amen. If we were going to sing extra verses to abide with me, maybe these would be what we could sing. Abide with me as I abide with you. So spoke the Lord to them and to us too. Stand not apart. Come close to me and live. Reach out, receive the joy and peace I give. Once on a cross, I gave my life for you. That is the love I'm asking of you, too. Know when you love the neighbor next to you. That's how you let me love them, too. Through you. Abide in his love and share his love. Go in peace, go in joy, or wait. Stay in peace, stay in joy, stay in love. Abide in him. God be with you till we meet again by his counsels guide uphold you with his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again God be with you till we meet again Neath his wings protecting hide you daily manna still provide you God be with you till we meet again God bless you <laughs>